So this video is somewhat of a spiritual successor to the video I did about a year and a half ago comparing the resource usage between KDE and XFCE. In this video though, we're going to be taking a look at GNOME 3.30 and KDE Plasma 5.14. Now, as you know about Linux desktop environments, the desktop itself is just as important as the distro it's running on. And in this one, we're gonna be using Manjaro as the base distro. Now, Manjaro probably sounds like a weird choice, but I explain why I use Manjaro at the end of this video. So, in the first part of the video, I'm gonna be comparing the system resource usage side by side in a pair of virtual boxes. At the end of the video, I'm going to be looking at some game benchmarks. Now, obviously, I won't be doing the gaming in VirtualBox. I'll be doing it on actual hardware. But I like having the two desktops side by side, so we're going to be using VirtualBox for this. So since KDE and GNOME use two completely different system monitors, I wanted to see which one I could install that was the most lightweight and required the fewest dependencies. I'm sure nobody's surprised to see that KSysGuard, which is KDE's system monitor, has a absolute ton of dependencies. The GNOME system monitor, on the other hand, has like three. So that's the system monitor we're gonna be using to look at system resource usage. Now I didn't do any sort of timing when it came to booting into either desktop, though I will say that GNOME booted in faster and I restarted both of the machines at the exact same time with hotkeys. KDE not only took longer to actually load into the desktop, like get past the display manager, but KDE also has this weird like boot screen. I'm not exactly sure what the purpose of it is. GNOME doesn't have it, and as soon as you get past the display manager, GNOME is ready to rock and roll. KDE has to do like preloading or something. But either way, KDE took probably 15 to 20 seconds longer to get to the desktop than GNOME did. So as I said at the beginning, this is Manjaro. The latest version of Manjaro was just released. It's Manjaro 18. We're using kernel version 4.19. As far as the number of packages installed, GNOME actually has a slightly smaller footprint at 977, KDE has 1075. The GNOME desktop version is 3.30.1, though Manjaro itself reports 3.30.2, and the Plasma version is KDE Plasma 5.14.2. Now taking a look at the system resource usage, I thought this was pretty cool, because I think everybody is expecting GNOME to be this big, huge, honking resource hog using a gigabyte of memory, and that is not the case. As you can see here, GNOME is using about 700 megabytes, and KDE is using, weirdly, 100 megabytes less at about 600. I sat here and watched the CPU history graph, and they're pretty much identical. I think that GNOME might have used, like, marginally less on average, but it's not really quantifiable and it's negligible at best. The GNOME shell is consuming about 150 megabytes of memory. The Plasma shell and Kwin X11 are two different processes, but when you put them together, they're using about 62 megabytes, still less than the GNOME shell. So as far as the overall memory footprint here, KDE is about 100 megabytes lighter all the way around. Now let's take a look at some apps. First up, we're gonna look at the terminal emulators. Now, oddly enough, at idle, they use the exact same amount of memory at 13.7. Now, both terminal emulators can support tabs and doing all sorts of different things in the tabs. When I opened up a few tabs and did like LS and some other operations, console, which is KDE's terminal emulator, consumed about a megabyte more, but they were pretty much the same either way. Next in line, we've got the file explorers. GNOME has Nautilus and KDE's got Dolphin. Nautilus runs as a single process and at idle consumes 34 megabytes. Dolphin is a little bit different. It runs as several different processes for like files and stuff. However, the overall memory footprint for all of these processes is actually less than Nautilus. And just like the terminals, you can open up tabs and have each tab do different things. Even with tabs and things open, Nautilus remained at about 30 megabytes. Dolphin created new processes for each operation and the tabs, kind of, and it caused the memory usage to go up a bit, but it was pretty negligible. I think in general, Dolphin is a lighter weight, in quotes, file manager than Nautilus is, but they're so close that it doesn't really matter the difference. And now let's take a look at the text editors. We've got gedit on GNOME and Kate on KDE. And once again, the GNOME application is just marginally heavier than the KDE application. However, I've been kind of ignoring the disk read and disk write because I'm not 100% sure what those are. For whatever reason, Kate has more disk read total than gedit does. 
And once again, with the tabs, you open tabs up and have each tab kind of doing its own thing. Gedit consumes more memory than Kate does. And just like pretty much every KDE application, Kate spawns subprocesses. But even when you add those subprocesses, it still comes in just a little bit lower than Gedit does. Now I was looking for other programs to test and compare against, but much to my surprise, there aren't a lot of one-to-one -one comparison with GNOME and KDE apps. Like for example, GNOME has Totem, or I guess it's called Videos now, but KDE doesn't really have an official video player. I think Dragon Player might be the official one, but it's like each distro ships with its own video player, so... And I didn't want to compare like Totem with VLC or something. But I think with this relatively small sample set and the fact that at idle KDE consumes less memory than GNOME does, it's safe to say that KDE is on average a lighter weight desktop than GNOME is. Now unlike previous benchmarks that I've done in the past where each graph is kind of its own section in the video, I'm just going to put all four graphs here and I'm going to talk about them. As you can see from these four benchmarks, neither desktop really pulls ahead of the other one. The only benchmark that really stands out is the UniEngine Sanctuary benchmark, and I'm not really sure why GNOME got like 12 points ahead of KDE Plasma, but when we're talking about frame rates that high, you're not really going to notice anything. And the reason why I chose these benchmarks to do, these are all pretty old games except for Dota, which is a Vulcan game. I figured that benchmarking older games would yield much higher frame rates, and if there was an actual difference between the two desktops that you would see larger variances, and that's mostly true. You can definitely see it in the UniEngine Sanctuary benchmark, but it's reversed in the Half-Life 2 benchmark. KDE Plasma actually pulled 10 points ahead of GNOME here. But at the end of the day, I think what these charts, benchmarks, and comparisons tell us is that if you're looking for really cutting edge performance and you're trying to choose between GNOME and KDE, they're about the same. Now you could argue that KDE is generally a lighter weight distro with lighter weight apps, but eh, the difference between the two is pretty much negligible, so it's really just your opinion. Do you want to use KDE and Qt apps? or do you want to use GNOME and GTK apps? I mean, yeah, there's a lot more that goes into it, but if you're trying to decide between the two desktops, I would absolutely not try to choose the one that offers better performance because they are pretty much the same. Now, I promised that I would explain why I went with Manjaro here, and I'm gonna try to keep it simple. Ideally, I would have used Ubuntu and KDE Neon, but Ubuntu doesn't really use a plain Jane vanilla GNOME. It actually has a lot of patches and custom stuff kind of going on. So my other thought was Fedora versus KDE Neon, but then I'm testing two completely different distros. Manjaro 18 just released earlier this month, so it has the latest and greatest GNOME and KDE. Seemed like a good choice. Now I know there's going to be people unhappy with the fact that I chose Manjaro, maybe I should have chose Debian or OpenSUSE or something, but the time seemed right. Brand new Manjaro release, latest KDE, latest GNOME, it sounded good so I went with it. But if I did go with Debian or even Ubuntu versus KDE, the results would have been the same. If your aim is nothing but performance, you're probably not going to go with KDE or GNOME. I think XFCE would probably be a better choice, and hey, I already did a video on that. So I'm going to go ahead and wrap this video up. I hope that you enjoyed it, and if you did, be sure to leave a like, comment, subscribe, all that good stuff. I appreciate all your support, and thanks for watching.